This is a very competitive law school. You know that. You chose us. Uh, and it was not easy to achieve a place in this class. So each and every one of you needs to be congratulated for your accomplishments in getting here. Uh, I know that uh, you will be highly successful, uh, you will contribute to society, and you will make all of us here at the University of Maryland Baltimore very proud of you. I uh, do care very much about conveying the message that you heard a moment ago, that we are all in this together to advance the human condition. So, as was described, when I see patients on Tuesday afternoons, and you probably caught the fact that I see children, children with digestive diseases, liver diseases, nutritional issues, when I see them and their families, I want to be certain that the panoply of students here at the University of Maryland uh, is prepared to work in a team toward the benefit of children and families. So when you come and spend an afternoon with me, and I will dearly look forward to it, when you come and spend an afternoon with me, more important than me, you're spending time with our nursing students, medical students, pharmacy students, our social work students, and our dentistry students. Why? Because increasingly it is becoming apparent that the care of children, adults, and families who are burdened by chronic diseases requires a team of professionals in order to do it effectively, in order to make a difference to those families and those patients, uh, and in order to conserve cost, not add to it. And I want you to be prepared for those of you who may be thinking about a career in healthcare law in some way, and for those of you who may not be, to become oriented to this way of thinking. When I go around the country, and talk about what I do on Tuesday afternoons and the importance I attach to it, my colleagues in healthcare will usually say, okay, I get what you're talking about, but what do you do with the law student? Well, I learned a long time ago that in fact, your profession, your discipline can make a great deal of difference to people who have what on the face of it appear to be health care issues. I'll give you a simple example. It's a Baltimore example where we have a lot of old housing still with lead-based paint on the walls. And some of you are familiar with a habit that some children acquire in the toddler years which is called pica. They will take flaking paint chips and eat them. And if they are in housing that has old lead-based paint layers, they become lead poisoned. And lead poisoning can lead to very significant and permanent neurologic damage. So I think you all know that we screen children for lead intoxication. And for those who are truly intoxicated, we in the healthcare professions are very good at knowing how to get the lead out. We bring them into hospital, we start an IV, and we chelate the metal with which they're overloaded, and it's excreted in the urine. We're very good at that. We know how to get lead out, and you know the rest of the story. And then what do we do? send them home and they become again lead intoxicated none of us should be surprised about that well would we know how to get the lead out and back they come to hospital 
that child in that family doesn't need a physician, doesn't need a nurse, doesn't need a hospital after they're first identified. They need a lawyer. We need a lawyer so that the landlord is made to comply with the law. That is a simple example of how lawyers make a difference to what is called the social determinant, the social determinants of health. Lawyers can be part of a health care team. Lawyers are certainly part of improving the human condition. So I'll look forward to you in clinic. But that's not the main thing I wanted to talk to you about. And I'll be brief. I uh, think it terribly important that as you prepare to be professionals, you focus on a commitment to civility. Let, let me use plain language. Now you're my students, and I'm proud of that. I expect you to be nice. Four-letter word, fluffy, I expect you to be nice. And I'm not ashamed to use that word, and I expect you to carry that uh, into your profession. Because the issue of professionals not being nice has become a matter of public discourse. It applies to all of the healthcare professions, to our social work students, and it certainly applies to you in law school. And uh, I uh, want to, in just a moment, uh, offer you some comments that are not mine, but that I cleave to about civility in your profession, in the profession for which you are preparing, in the legal profession. Uh, there is a uh, journal that I became aware of that is called The Bencher, uh, the magazine of the Inns of Court. And in that journal, some years ago, a gentleman named Jean Lafitte wrote about civility in the legal profession. And I'm quoting, the lawyer in earnest pursuit of civility enhances his credibility with his adversary, his client, and the courts. Credibility is the key element, I'm sorry, civility is the key element in the art of persuasion, which in turn is key to a lawyer's success. He goes on to say, quote, our system of justice would benefit were civility to reign supreme. The rule of law is vital to a civilized society, and more than anyone else, lawyers are charged to be vigilant for the constant improvement of the administration of justice, the fair and just treatment of all. Make no mistake about it, the administration of justice is being harmed, not aided, by incivility in the profession. Lack of candor, discourtesy, undue acrimony, unfair dealings, and gamesmanship create serious inefficiencies and unfairness in the system, are a hindrance in the pursuit of truth, and undermine public confidence in the legal system. Certainly, I could not begin to say it as well as this was said, but those words compel me as a non-lawyer, and I hope you will keep that in mind as you commit yourself to being nice, as you commit yourself to civility. So I wish you the best of luck uh, in your studies here at the University of Maryland Francis King Carey School of Law. I've shared with you my strong conviction that you've chosen an excellent program with top-notch faculty and staff, and uh, I am confident that you will find here a welcoming and civil environment in which to live and learn. 
Thank you and good luck.